<laughs> my favorite part about it though, I just love it. It's this old school. <laughs> and then it was just shoved like as far as somebody could get on the step stool. Like, we'll never see this again. <laughs> no, not until today. That's what we do here. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin on a day where I'm becoming a little bit more old school. Today just happens to be my birthday and I just happen to be in Denver, Colorado of all places. I'm out here for a couple days on business and I just stumbled into this place. This place is called Discount Fish and Tackle in downtown Denver and one step inside and I knew that I was not going to leave this place without dropping a video and dropping a few bucks on some old school gold. I was talking to Blake who works in the shop. He was showing me around and you talk about new old stock stuff. Holy cow. Wait till you guys get a look at what's inside. All right guys, so as soon as you walk in the front door, <laughs> check this out. It is a rack of old school discontinued baits. I think this is probably the discount bin of stuff that they're, you know, phasing out, trying to get rid of. And I see about 12 things that I'm probably gonna take off their hands. Okay, so check this out. First off, <laughs> look at that. An old school Excalibur Shad R. That is an awesome bait. Yeah, I see one that's got the floating model here. And then of course, you guys remember the red eyes meant that it was a suspending bait. That is awesome. What else do we have? Ah, uh, look at this, the old Crankbait Corp Fingerling. So that looks like some sort of minnow version. I've got the, um, the catfish version of this bait, but that looks pretty cool. I think that's an old balsa bait from probably sometime in the 1980s, early 90s. Okay, check this out. This is one of my favorite looking old school baits. I can't say I've caught a ton of fish on this bait, but I just love the packaging. And honestly, anything Rebel is pretty cool. The old Black Star. So this is, we totally need to do a Retro Bass and episode on this bait. This is probably one of the most over-engineered crankbaits out there. There's like graphite and all kinds of wackiness in this bait. But those are... I've never ever seen one of those anywhere but but like on eBay. So there's one in a black, that one in a classic orange. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Just <laughs> Rebel Black Stars hanging out. Ooh, look at this. A little fast track shad from a Rebel. That's another old school bait. Man, never ending. So what do we have here? The old snapback kitchen tube who is that on there uh oh that's old skeet reese that's like a young looking skeet reese so i don't know that i have ever fished the old terminator snapback but that does not look like a new uh bait at all so we got that flipping tube it looks like in a couple of different colors okay so what is this it says the missile quality rigged scented lures I have no idea. That almost looks like sort of a uh, a sluggo or a wormo kind of bait, pre-rigged with two hooks. No idea. That's wild. It's like a pretty old school green look in there, and more of a silver one. <laughs> wait, it says old school <laughs> maps. Oh, that's awesome. Whoa, wait a minute. So how old is that? I was trying to find a date online, like while you were gone, after yeah. I found it, and I I couldn't find a date. There was some guy saying it was like 
70s, but it was just some weird random forum. So, and but they're but they're actual maps. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they're, they they were quoted as saying the original, and they say that they have like a British patent on them, which I've never seen on a maps package before. And then it's funny because it says it's German here and then French on the bottom, so I'm not sure. What Dude, about, I've ne that is wild. Hey Josh, see you at the and it's like a pack of how many of them? Three of them? Yeah, three. Yeah. So what were <laughs> what? <laughs> and then there's some that are so old they're starting to like oxidize. What is? So the uh, brevet on there is just French oh, that's, for patent. Okay. So I was just saying that the British patent they have, and then the, the <laughs> French patent too. So they're just telling you. Both countries got you covered on the patent. Awesome. <laughs> My favorite part about it, though, I just love it. It's this old school. <laughs> and then it was just shoved, like, as far as somebody could get on the step stool. Like, we'll never see this again. <laughs> no, not until today. That's what we do here. <laughs> That's, like, a lot of... Man. Yeah, so, some of those yellow carded ones are going to have to come with. Um... I have to figure out what kind of... I'm really curious about what bird is on top of there. Oh, you're right. It's like a falcon or something. Look at that. I honestly think... To me, it looks like a prairie grouse or like a sage chicken. That's the wildest thing, man. Well, they started this shop in 92, this actual location. This is the original. Okay. And they experimented with a couple different locations, like uh, one in Fort Collins, one okay. in Nevada. Um, but this is the one that stood the test of time, the original shop. So. And then what kind of fishing do most people do in Colorado? Is it like mostly... Because I see a lot of spinners. Is it like wildlife? type stuff or so I smallies this shop opened my eyes to the to the opportunity we have for warm water in Colorado because for me I when I moved from New Mexico to Colorado it was like I'm gonna go to the land of fly fishing you know and then when I walked into this shop I was like oh there is a very thriving community of warm water fishermen as well, okay and conventional stuff too so it's like big now walleye yeah. bass a lot of guys have been asking me for tiger musky and um pike lately so, really so, okay yeah, yeah oh wow that's awesome man so, yeah, a lot of fly fishing stuff but i mean the conventional amount that we sell here is very even with the fly fishing. really okay yeah. now what's and you said you guys do a lot of stuff online too absolutely it's kind so of what's the best way for people to hit you up if they do see something like dude that old school box of maps <laughs> that they want to get into so these maps i honestly probably do not have online yeah any pictures or anything but else, they could but give you a call right yeah we give us a call or i mean even our email is available online too and okay we're very we check the email out of even pure boredom every couple hours at least so dude, you oh, can get a hold of us whether it's by the phone number post online the coolest thing about this place is not only are there like rows and rows of old school tackle there's so much tackle, the walls actually fold in <laughs> so that they could fit more stuff in. Check this out. <laughs> so when you're done shopping in one particular section here at Discount Tackle, you just swing the shelf closed and you're into the next. <laughs> it's wild. I don't know if this place has more spoons or spinners, but I am probably standing in the most epic in-store collection of inline spinners that I've ever seen. There's some crazy old school baits from Meps, from Rooster Tail, from some stuff I didn't even know. <laughs> okay, so here I see some more old school stuff, more of the modern day looking Meps packaging, but look over here. Oh, who remembers that? The old Meps Lightning. Oh man, it's like a willow leaf kind of blade, and it's got some sort of crystal prism tape on it. That used to be a money bait for uh, pickerel and bass back in the day. That's pretty cool. I don't know what year that is, but that is definitely probably 20 plus years old. So this is the old Aglia Long uh, inline spinner. And it says something on there I can't quite read. Huh. Not sure what that says. It might just say MEPS on it. But that is a really nice uh, prism blade, little bucktail. <laughs> That's old timey. Okay, so this thing, I totally remember this kind of blade. So I've never fished this. It's called the double cross in an inline spinner version. But I totally had a Meps Bass Killer spinnerbait back in the day that had this blade. This blade itself, it's a two piece blade that you can separate to make bigger or smaller, depending if you want to, I guess, slow down the action or make it faster. I'm definitely going to pick up a few of these, and I will be fishing this on some of the local creeks and lakes, no doubt. Um, that's a really cool-looking bait, the old Double Cross from Meps. I don't know what year that is, but that's been discontinued for a long, long time. 
Oh, here we go. It's another classic. Uh, this is called the old Cyclops spoon. So this is the same body design as a MEPS timber doodle, which is a spoon that's weedless. It's got a little keeper uh, hook on it and you fish it with the split double tail. This is just the straight up version that's got the treble hook on it. But I have caught a ton of uh, pickerel on honestly this exact bait. And that, my friends, is uh, <laughs> not a new bait at all. That's awesome. Mep Cyclops. That's pretty cool. So they've got some new Meps, but I, you know me, I, I gravitate to, to this old crusty stuff here. Um, what's this? Uh, another Cyclops, little mini Cyclops. What do we have down here? Okay, so another Meps long spinnerbait. Look at that. That's a, that's a little heavy one. That's probably more like a half ounce. Ooh, I might be grabbing that too. That would totally catch a bass. Wow. Okay, so here's that Meps timber doodle I talked about. So this is not a um, discontinued bait, but it's the same um, blade design as the Cyclops, but this just has that single hook, and those are the uh, double tails that you put on there. It was invented in 1939 by a gentleman in France. Okay, so, that's why it's called a French spinner. Right. Okay. So he realized he had something good on his hands, and he started selling it out, like saying, like, I got a spinner and selling it to other companies under their brand. So this is an instance of that. So this Reiser Germany is like a outfitting and tackle German shop that was like, hey, we'll carry your MEPS lures and sell them for you. And so they put them in their own packaging. Oh! And this, so my best guess is this is from 1952. Wow! And why do you think then? I'm thinking then because it looks to me like that's when this guy started this company and he was only working with three companies, MEPS and two others at that time, um, and had the, the, the licensing in order to sell these this way. So, I mean, that's just my best. That's and, how, and, how, so. and how did a German MEPS end up here of all places? That's a good question. All I heard was when I pulled this box down was one of the older guys that works here said, oh yeah, we purposely bought those because they the allure of how old they were, but where they came from or why the people that had them had them, nobody knows. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's the French spinner, so that does make sense. It wasn't a... But it's got a British patent on it, yeah, so, so apparently they were just so they were they became so widespread across Europe. They were in Britain, France, and they came over to the United States in the fifties to Wisconsin first. A guy was given one of these by a GI that came back from World War II and was like, found this spinner in France, and so he was like, oh. I'm having a real slow day on the river. I guess I'll tie on this gift I got from my GI. Yeah. Oh. And he caught a, the story goes, yeah, he caught a really huge trout on it. So Of course. Dude, that's awesome. Like crazy in Wisconsin, and here we are. So. I said spinners and spoons, and here we've got some more spinners and a bunch more spoons. And one of my favorite spoons of all time, the Effinger Daredevil. Check out that rack of old school Daredevils. I gotta tell you, Bass and Buds, if I could fish with one lure for the rest of my life, it would probably be that exact bait. The Daredevil Imp, that's a two-fifth of an ounce uh, spoon in the classic black and white with that awesome Daredevil icon. That bait, to me, I probably caught more fish on this exact bait than any other bait that I've got. Um, just so versatile, such an awesome, awesome bait, such a crazy action. You can fish this thing in so many different ways. So here is that same bait in an old crackle frog color. I've actually caught a ton of fish on that color. I love that. Very old school, sort of that green and yellow and that crackle pattern. I've also got a ton on this one. I think this one's called um, Potato Bug or something like that, but it's like an orange with black spots. Here's a classic spoon color. The old uh, red diamond on a yellow spoon. But yeah, there's a ton of really cool Eppingers here. Ooh, look at that. They've even got this one. I don't know what this is called, but I call it the McDonald's color. Instead of the uh, red and white, it's like the red and yellow. It looks like a Happy Meal or something. Oh, I just spotted something. So, you guys remember a few videos ago when I picked up some old school Johnson Silver Minnows from Jensen Tackle. This is a packaging I'm familiar with. But I've never seen that before. Check that out. 
That's like an old, old package of the old silver minnow. So there isn't a classic gold. Huh, that's pretty wild, look at that. Almost a, um, like a Bass Buster logo, right? Sort of like maybe that's like the Johnson Bass Buster merger. Cause that looks very uh, Bass Buster-esque to me. Awesome. So we got some more spoons in here. Ah, so this is interesting. Pot O Gold Lures. I've seen these before. I don't know that I've got too many of these, but it says from the Rainbow Plastic Company in Collins, Colorado. Pot O Gold. Huh, that looks pretty similar to a Daredevil, but a little bit of a different shape. Made in the USA, okay. So I don't know a ton about Pot O Gold, but looks like some sort of local version of the old Eppinger Daredevil. That's a pretty cool logo, though, isn't it? <laughs> and there's another pot of gold that looks like maybe a newer version of it. Yeah, definitely. It's got more verbiage on the back. Might even have a website. So That's one tell, by the way. If you want something really vintage, there shouldn't be a website on the back, right? <laughs> oh. And look at that, the old classic Blue Fox Pixie Spoon. We saw this in the old Blue Fox catalog we uh, ripped open from 19, I think it was 80. And that's really cool. And that's supposed to represent an egg sack, which is wild. Um, just in the standard uh, color there. I don't know, that looks like semi-old school packaging, doesn't it? Like the old school Blue Fox logo. And check those out. The old Thomas Boyant Spoon. Huh. Made in the USA. Definitely a newer bait, but um, that is one that I've never fished before. That's a pretty good-looking little spoon, though, isn't it? Okay, so here's probably the most well-known offering from Acme. The old Castmaster spoon. This thing was money for saltwater or freshwater, but I probably fish this thing in saltwater more often for like breaking stripers and breaking bluefish. This thing would cast a mile. So this is a half an ounce spoon. It's pretty small for half an ounce. It sunk pretty quick and man, it caught everything with fins. <laughs> However, I had no idea it came in that many different varieties. And then down here, check this out. So this is another really cool spoon from Acme called the Phoebe. It's sort of a fish-shaped spoon, and hold on its side. It's got a weird sort of bend in it. This is sort of a shallow swimming spoon, definitely a casting spoon. That's a bigger one than I'm used to fishing. I have fished mostly this size of the Phoebe in probably that exact color. <laughs> the spoons never end. Check out this thing, though. The Canadian Wonder. Anybody ever heard of that spoon? I know we have, like, I think two subscribers from Canada, so let me know if you've ever heard of the Canadian Wonder. I have no idea what that is. It looks like a really small, light little spoon with a single hook on it. And does not look like new packaging, does it? Who even makes that? <laughs> all right digging through uh some more spinners here look what i came across the bass buster beetle and that is a big old beetle that's not even the beetle spin that's just the straight up beetle which i don't know what you do with to be honest with you <laughs> and check it out look at that guys old school bass buster beetle spins in the old school logo packaging with, it's got that one head, one spinner, and three baits. <laughs> For $2.99 from old Bass Buster. So looks like they've got that in white. And also in black. Those are actually really good looking for as old as they are. And I'd say they probably have about, looks like 20 um, packs of the old Beetle Spins on the shelf. Ooh, Mr. Twister. Man, wait a minute. Hold up. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that. The old school Mr. Twister Sassy Shad. Oh, man. I caught many a striped bass on that exact bait. The four-inch 
clear chartreuse mr twister oh wow that's awesome he used to fish this on a jig head like a quarter ounce or half ounce casting trolling you name it but son that would catch some fish what else do we have from mr twister here um looks like this is some sort of grub but it looks like it says assorted but it looks like it's a grub with a fin on it so that is unique i don't know what the name of that is that's really cool okay you can see it a little bit better here i think this is the same version of that grub and it's got a fin on the top i don't know what the name of that is um i might have to grab that just so i can look it up later man does it say it on the back here nope it does not so what else do we have here we've got some mr twister worms some curly tail worms that's a big old worm there isn't it everything just says assorted so i don't know exactly what model that is And looks like a nice old black and blue. Ooh, look at this. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to have to just go through all these. That is really cool looking. Um, a nice clear red. They don't make Guggen's that color, do they? <laughs> I have been on a little bit of a rebel kick late after trading a few baits with my bass and bud, John. And look what I see here. Some discontinued rebels. They had a really cool line back in the day called the Terrestrials. There was some baits like the Caddercrawler and the Cricket Hopper, which they still make, but a lot of them they don't. I see a few here that I know for a fact are not available on Lornet. Okay, so here is a nice little section I just stumbled upon of old school Rebel Terrestrials. So I see four different versions of this. Oh man, this was called the Big Ant. And it's like a little crankbait in the shape of a big ant. They had this whole terrestrial line back in the day, which had some really cool stuff. So there it is in red. A chrome big ant. Woo. Oh, a grub pattern. Yeah, look at that. And this one sort of looks like more of a black pattern. It's hard to see. That's awesome. And then uh, over here, so it looks like there's a couple packages that time hasn't been kind to. I'll move those to the side. Oh, yeah, but look at this. The old Bumble Bug. So here's one with the actual logo on it <laughs> that says Bumble Bug. Check it out. And that is a hornet-shaped little crankbait. Man, these were some fun baits that Rebel came out with back in the day. So here's the Cricket Hopper. Still a bait that's around, but the Cricket Popper, I don't know that I've got it in a blue chrome like that, though. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And there's a more modern version that you can still get from Lornet of that bait. But what a fun, fun line of ultralight baits. I love those things. So if this is your first time here at Retro Bastion, I apologize for this walkthrough. This place is packed with a ton of really cool, really modern baits. But you know me, if it's old, if it's dusty, if it's crusty, it's got to come with me. And I've kind of glossed over a lot of the cool newer baits to find a few hidden gems. And there's actually a couple of really cool ones right behind me. Okay, looking through the crankbait aisle. First off, I see some really nice old school Rebels. I'm not sure how modern that package is, but that's the old Rebel um, R. I guess like the little R. And there looks like a deep we are. That's a pretty cool bait. Um, what else do I see that's uh, pretty old school looking? Um, okay, well, look at this. Um, so there's a rather young KVD in a striking Premier Pro model. I don't know that I've ever thrown that. That almost looks like a, a man's one minus or a baby one minus, but a striking version. Got to be honest with you, I've never fished this bait before, but um, for $3.99, I think I might have to grab a few of them. And again, <laughs> if there's ever like three of something, you know it's going to come with me. Um, but that's a pretty cool looking little bait with some pretty cool packaging and a, 
a young KVD. What else do we have here? Okay, so there's another uh, Excalibur suspending. Okay, that's pretty cool. With the old red eye. I like that the red eye would suspend and the clear eye would not. And what do we have up here? So there's another one. And that one actually has Bill Dance's uh, name on it. So that's like the old, almost like the old Fat Free Shad, I think. But under the Excalibur banner. A uh, bunch of lipless crankbaits, a bunch of traps here. Um, even these, you don't see traps in plastic anymore. You definitely don't see them in this. That's an old school Bill Lewis package. You guys remember the package with uh, the old fisherman right there, that logo? <laughs> I love that. That's the way that I used to buy rattle traps as a kid. They always came in that clear package with some sort of sticker on the you know specific model that it was. And here's a nice looking saltwater rattle trap half ounce a uh, bunch of spinner baits and oh ho, ho, ho. <laughs> look at that a man's loudmouth spinner bait this is a pretty wild spinner bait it's got a big colorado blade and i don't know if you can see but it's thick it's filled with bb's listen to this <laughs> that is awesome that makes a ton of noise and from man's to three eighths ounce, yep, <laughs> that is old school awesome. Where'd you get those? Well, I found them a, like a while back during the ice fishing season. We were pulling out ice fishing gear, and uh, I could see the guys were like trying to push a box back, and they didn't want anything to do with it. And these were in that box. I'll be up front and say I have literally zero idea how the functionality. Air, air, Bob. Oh my gosh. And so this Air Lights company started in Nebraska in 1946. And they yeah. started making bobbers on a single machine one by one. And uh, by 1961, they had expanded into all sporting goods. They were making like decoys along with their bobbers. But bobbers started it all on one single machine. And they're still a plastic company today. No longer making bobbers. With no metal parts, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. So how do you even fish that? That's a great question. I, it's, and it says it's a double hook rig. So I'm assuming it has to do with doing a leader on each side of it okay and then it floating sideways but i think that's crazy so I, that doesn't feel correct to me but. so where was this box uh so i've got these just uh right over in the musky section okay that's place. great <laughs> <laughs> let me see yeah so bobber section and okay and a living right here. they were just living right there so how much oh and there's another one too this is the same yep the same, same company but a little more uh, same, a little more so how much of, more how much of the air bobs uh so i don't even think we've decided on that honestly i, th I put it out as a joke Kind of like expecting one of the other guys to have to deal with the first customer to come up with one. You realize you're going to sell every one of these <laughs> old school, if, yeah. not, if not to me, to, to, to one of the best. So I, I suppose we'll just have to haggle on this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I just, well, because you almost have to buy the whole thing. Oh, man, look at that logo. That's a beaut. Um, we'll have to read that and see how you even use that. No metal parts to break or rust. Okay. Molded of plastic. That is wild, man. So the air, the air light plastic company, Nebraska, and you probably looks like since nineteen uh, sixty four you've sold two of them. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> so today, today, today's your lucky day with those. <laughs> well, bass and buds, there we are. <laughs> Got a bag full of goodies <laughs> to take back to Texas. So uh, happy birthday to me. <laughs> This was an awesome, really impromptu stop and one of my new favorite fishing tackle destinations, Discount Fishing Tackle. So if you guys are ever out in Denver, Colorado, I'm gonna drop all of the information for this place down below. Blake, by the way, said those guys, they ship all over the place. So if any of my bass and buds out there saw something you liked, chances are I left a few on the shelf for you. So go ahead and reach out to Blake and he can definitely hook you up remotely. Until next time, guys, get the carpet side up. Definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.